Hello, 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 and welcome. I am Dr. Neva. If this is your first time here watching um, Neva Lines by Dr. Neva, welcome. Today I have a super special guest, and we'll call her the law boss. So she does have the name definitely she's a wonderful attorney coming to you from jamaica and that's why i have this beautiful background because i want to give that tropical vibes right so how should i address you attorney brian yes i like that that sounds good <laughs> awesome i want you to introduce yourself to the rest of the world Awesome. So I am Sophia Bryan. I am an attorney at law here in Jamaica. My firm's name is The Law Boss Firm, and we prioritize real estate and probate. And our main aim is to support Jamaicans who are in the diaspora and Jamaicans who reside at home, helping them to build and protect a lasting legacy. And we do that through real estate probate. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people, they either, either they're from Jamaica, they migrated, they want to come back to set up a home. There's some that just come and fall in love with Jamaica. I mean, it is totally beautiful. You know, what are some tips that you would give them or steps that you would tell them, you know, when purchasing, what should they be doing? What should they be looking out for? Yes, uh, that's a great question. Um, many Jamaicans who go overseas and they would have amassed a certain amount of wealth or they've gone through the process of acquiring assets outside of Jamaica, it's, it's, it's totally different. The process may have been more simple for them, but in Jamaica, things are not as clear cut and smooth and information regarding buying assets it's everything is not black and white out there for you to find out you'd have to do a lot of digging and knowing where to search and i i'm not sure if that's a way to ensure that lawyers always have work uh, <laughs> however uh in order to buy real estate in jamaica you absolutely have to have a lawyer that's facilitating the transfer process so even if you are savvy enough to interact with someone and come to an agreement as to what the cost for the property will be, um, you will still need the support of an attorney with the documentation process. And so there are some people that try to shortcut the process, but it ends up not working out in their favor. So I recommend that every person, if you're buying or selling, you have your own attorney that is advocating on your behalf, because even, even if you're getting a good deal, you know, sometimes some things can fall through the cracks and the attorney will ensure that you're protected throughout the process. One of the great things about um, having an attorney in your corner is the due diligence checks. Um, this is obviously um, something that's encouraged in every jurisdiction. So your due diligence checks ensures that the person that's purporting to sell <laughs> is actually the owner of the property. And it also verifies whether the person that's purporting to buy, saying that they're a viable uh, buyer, that they actually have the means and resources to do so and they have the means and resources to do, th do so in a legal manner. And so with the, the scamming culture that's emerging globally, um, it's important that you have someone that is doing the due diligence checks for you. And our government has really made an emphasis to ensure that as an attorney, I have an obligation to do my own checks to make sure that, um, the, the source of funds are from legitimate means. And so you don't want to be as an innocent bystander caught up in something that's purely facilitating money laundering. And real estate transactions are the prime targets um, for those kinds of you know, unscrupulous persons. So the due diligence checks, that's one of the huge benefits of having an attorney um, on your side. Um, aside from that, recognize that the fees are not as clear cut. 
that's one of the other things I really like about buying real estate in the US. The fees are clear cut, you know, you can, any attorney, you can just Google it and you just get an instant breakdown of what the fees are. Not quite so here. Um, a lot of the fees are dependent on the value and the and or the purchase price of the property. So in addition to your deposit, there is stamp duty. Everything in Jamaica requires paying stamp duty. There is registration costs. Um, there is cost for the legal documentation that you sign. And so just understand that it's not just your deposit. It's not just the value of the property. You, you need to have some money set aside um, if you're going to do it and you're going to do it in a very time efficient sort of manner. Okay, that's very in-depth. But one thing stuck out to me is the fact, you know, you mentioned the scamming culture, you know, and it's worldwide, definitely. Mm -hmm. So if you were to say to someone that's coming to purchase, what should they look out for? What is like a typical scam? Oh, yeah. So if the, um, a big one is if the person is saying that they have a power of attorney to sell on the behalf of someone, that's a big one. And another one is where it involves a probate. So the, the original owner has passed on and the person that's purporting to sell is saying that they're the administrator. And so it's it's really on the onus is really on the attorneys to really satisfy themselves that this person that's saying that they're the administrator of the property, that they actually do have the power to do so, because I'm actually in the midst of a litigation now uh, where my client's aunt, great aunt, was in the US and someone that was looking after her in a nursing home came to Jamaica and basically started the administration process for her estate without anybody in the family knowing. And so they saw they were able to sell the property. Um, and so we're in the midst of rectifying that. Um, and it's a complicated process, you know, sometimes you can do some checks and then, you know, the, what's presented is so convincing you think that it's real. And so we just have to do the checks and balances everywhere. The other one about the power of attorney, you know, they can say, oh, the person is sick, et cetera. And I have the power of attorney. If they're unable to produce the power of attorney, if they cannot produce the power of attorney, they're not a power of attorney. Um, and I've seen instances where, you know, we've been firm to say, please produce this document. And then they just offer to cancel the transaction, you know, mm. because they, they weren't able to produce a document. So attorney, I know was a power of attorney and you know. Mm -hmm. So for those that, you know, came oh, over this clear. video and they don't have a clue what is a power of attorney, yeah. you definitely, you know, have sure. those individuals. What, what exactly is a power of attorney? Right. So this is actually a document that says... Um, I am acting in the position of another person. So typically this is like a husband and wife situation, close relatives. Um, so for example, a, a husband will, be, will give his wife power of attorney. And it's a document that says, if I am sick, if I am outside of the country, if for whatever reason, this person has the authority to sign documents on my behalf, and they have the power to basically anything they do on my behalf, pretend as though I'm the one doing it. So it's like they're like a twin then. Um, and the document has to be, um, it, it goes through a process. So you have to get it witnessed in the presence of a JP. Americans call it a notary. So if the person is in Jamaica, one person is in Jamaica and one person is in the US, for example, the notary would have to sign the power of attorney and then they would have to stamp it. Like I said, everything has stamp duty in Jamaica. Everything is taxed. So once it goes to the, the stamp commissioner's office and it's stamped, then it goes to what's called the registrar general's department. And then you, you pay more money again <laughs> for them to keep a copy of the document and for them to stamp it to say, okay, this is legit. We have it in our system. 
the good thing about um, powers, powers of attorney, you have different types. And so my preference is for someone to have a power of attorney that speaks to a specific transaction rather than a broad brush thing, because you just never know, you know what I mean? Just to protect yourself. If it is that you know that you're unavailable to facilitate this real estate transaction, let the power of attorney speak specifically to real estate transactions. If you're selling a car and you're traveling and you need the person to facilitate the paperwork, let it speak specifically to that. You don't want something that's so broad brush, broad brush rather, that the person just does whatever they want to do. Um, you don't want someone to be tempted to abuse their power. Definitely. So my last question for you, you know, we're here talking about real estate and mentioned earlier that, you know, you may have tourists come in to purchase or investors, right? So let's look at the yeah. investment. Can you think of a benefit of purchasing? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is the ideal time for um, tourists, for investors, to invest in Jamaica because everyone, it's like, um, it's a bandwagon that everybody sort of jumping on right now. And you really want to be in the loop of things while the market is very open and accessible right now. I foresee the government maybe in the next five years putting very strict stipulations on what a person needs to have in order to buy a large amount of real estate in Jamaica. It has to be clearly beneficial to the country. And so until that time comes, um, I think if you have the, re the resources to do so, Jamaica is an ideal market. Again, yes, you absolutely have to get the support of an attorney. You have to get somebody to do the groundwork to find out reputable people to do the checks for you, surveyors, valuators, etc. But that after doing that initial, you know, that initial investment of time and resources, it's really just smooth sailing from there once you have an efficient team um, in your hands. There is a lot of money to be made in Jamaica. Real estate um, is one of our top producing, um, it's a top producing revenue generator for Jamaica. Um, people are always going to want to come here, regardless of what's in the media. And this is, I think it's a great market. So if you have the money, definitely look into Jamaica. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Attorney Brian. Yes. It's a pleasure yes, having yes. you here and just sharing some knowledge, gem as usual. And uh, on how can they reach you? Okay, so um, the website is thelawbossfirm.com. Very simple, thelawbossfirm.com. And I have a guide to buying and selling real estate in Jamaica. If you're on social media, um, on Instagram, it's Law Boss Jamaica, And you can go to the link in bio to find that. Or you can just reach out via email and I will send you the guide and it will just offer a breakdown of the steps that you need to take um, to buy and sell real estate in Jamaica. Yes, and I will include that link to this of video. Course. Right. So thank you so much. Until next time. Yes, it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.